This is the Hay Gears Ultracraft Reflex RS Turbo. And this is the Hay Gears Ultracraft Reflex. Now, at first glance, both of these printers look exactly the same. And if you think that, you definitely would not be wrong because they are pretty much exactly the same, except for one thing that Hay Gears has changed with the RS Turbo model, and that is the screen. Now, if you already bought an original Ultracraft Reflex RS and you're like, I just bought this thing, I spent all this money on it, and now they've come out with a whole new printer that put turbo at the end, so it means it's going to be faster, it's better than the printer that I have, why do companies always do this, why can't they just let things breathe for a little bit? Hey, listen, I get it, but it's not as bad as you might think, because the only thing that Hey Gears has changed with the RS Turbo is the screen. Everything else is the same. And what they changed with the screen is not something that affects the printer and its accessories or anything else in any way. So instead of having a mono screen, which is what the Ultracraft Reflex RS has, the Turbo now has an amber screen. And I'm not an engineer, but I will put a photo up on the screen so that you can kind of see the difference in what Hay Gears has done with the construction of the screen and the amberness that they added to it. Now, they say the advantage of having that amber screen is that for one, and this is what's most important to me, is it speeds up the prints. It helps you to print faster. And then it also helps to promote greater light uniformity across the entire display. And you'll be able to get up to 1 million exposures with the amber screen as well. So that in and of itself is a good thing. Now, Again, if you already have the Ultracraft Reflex RS and you're feeling kind of bummed out, it's okay because you can just buy the screen that comes with the turbo. And when you want to, or when it's time for you to change the screen in the RS, you can just buy the Amber screen, install it in the RS, and like magic, you will also have an RS turbo. And hey Gears, I've seen the video that they made um, showing how you can switch out the screen. And honestly, it looks pretty easy. I haven't done it personally, but it's really just a matter of uh, taking out like a few screws and uh, disconnecting a ribbon cable, sliding the screen in, plugging everything back in. And then there's also this calibration tool as well that you can use with a feature that's built into the printer that'll help you calibrate the screen once you install a new one. And then you will be done and that's pretty cool so i like that even though they came out with a new printer they did not close off an upgrade path for people who bought an original ultracraft reflex whether it was several months ago or even recently so that is a good thing speaking of which let's talk about the price now, like a lot of these 3D printer launches, this is gonna launch at a very special price. It's not gonna be any more expensive than what the price on the original Ultracraft Reflex was when it wasn't on sale. So the original price is gonna be $999, so it's a $1,000 printer. But if you get it during the special launch window, which is going to be between May 28th and June 19th, you'll be able to get it for $799. That is how much the RS Turbo is going to cost you. And because I am a privileged YouTuber, if you want to use either my affiliate link or my uh, promo code, they're going to give you another $50 off. So call it $750 for the RS Turbo. And I have absolutely no qualms about recommending this printer to anybody because I've used it for many months, not the RS Turbo, but the original RS. And it is an amazing printer. I've said it a bunch of times and I continue to say it. It is a very reliable printer. So I'm still going to recommend that. And I still recommend this because they are the exact same printer just with some more benefits given to you with that amber screen and then there's also some other promotional discounts if you want to get like a, a combo or if you want to get this with some resin i'll have it all listed so if you want to do that show some support that's great and i thank you for it so let's talk a little bit more about this printer as i say nothing changes about it. So because the screen is the same 10.3 inch screen, it's an 8K screen, so it didn't go up to like 16K or nothing like that. It's still an 8K screen. The build plate is also exactly the same. 
They ain't changed anything about it, okay? And that also means all the accessories that you could buy or maybe you already have for the RS also work fine. And that's gonna be the heated vat or and or the pulsing release module, which I actually have running on this right now, all of that still works. It's the same. The 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 uh, power brick that comes with the two, it's still the same. The lighting on the inside, it's still the same. The lid, it's still the same. The display that you interact with, the touchscreen, all the same. So, you know, I'm just going to keep on reiterating that the screen is the only thing that's changed. All right. So earlier I said that the thing that I like most about this new screen is the promise of speeding up your print times. I know that speed with resin 3D printers. Some people say they don't care about speed. They can just go to sleep and wake up and have the print be done. And that's all good. And I get that. I'm kind of like that. But at the same time, I'm also kind of impatient. So I really want things to be faster. And truth be told, the RS Turbo, even with the Turbo name, it's still not going to be as fast as some other competing resin 3D printers on the market. It and the original RS, in my opinion, are not fast printers by modern standards. There's printers that don't cost as much as these that are faster, but these are really reliable, very reliable. I've had very, very little failures with either of these printers. And since they are the same, I suspect the same thing is going to happen once I get as many um, hours on the RS Turbo as I did with the RS. But in order to kind of test that whole speed thing, I got some miniatures here. And these are these robotic Doberman uh, type of dogs that I printed. Now, I use the exact same file inside of Blueprint Studio with the same resin, the same supports, the, the same everything. And in Blueprint Studio, you can take that same file and you can just send it to whatever printers that you have that's connected to your account. So that's what I did. And I used the past 10 resin to print these. And when they were done, the prints that came off the RS Turbo were done in about five hours and 10 minutes. And the prints that were done on the original Ultracraft Reflex RS were done in seven hours and 41 minutes. So that is a pretty decent amount of time that I was able to save using the RS Turbo model. And even before I really even knew what all the differences and specs was, as I was just kind of printing things, I did kind of notice like this seems like it's moving a little bit faster as far as the times go compared to the original RS when I'm not using the post release module. So that claim turns out to be completely accurate. So I got two miniatures here. They're the exact same miniature, one printed on the RS Turbo and the other one printed on the original RS. And I'm going to put them on screen close up so that you can take a look at them. And what we're looking for are any, uh, really big differences in the quality between these two minis. And just by looking at them with my naked eye, I'm not seeing a big difference between them, you know, like at all. They look pretty similar to me. So I can't give the edge to one over the other. I think that they both look good and I'm not disappointed with either of them. But the differences in just the detail from these based on these models, you know, they look pretty much the same. And it's the same thing with all of these other uh, little dogs here that I printed. I looked at each of them closely and they all look very similar. Now that's not a bad thing, but it did print much faster on the turbo than it did on the original RS. And to me, that alone is good enough, you know? And, um, as far as the whole light uniformity thing and stuff, you know, like I don't have the tools or really the knowledge to really dig into the deep technical aspects of it and be able to do calculations and tell you just how accurate all these things are. I just kind of go with the practical dude who prints approach. OK, so I got all of these stormtroopers here from Galactic Armory. And I put as many of these stormtroopers on the build plate as I could without having the rafts touch 
touch each other or the models being too close because I just don't like my models to be that close together when I'm printing. But all of these filled this, the screen. It was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten of these stormtroopers on the plate scattered all across. And I just printed them all in one shot. And because these were so small, these ended up printing in about two hours in about 20 minutes. It was definitely less than three hours. All of these printed out with the bases already attached to them. And I used their new Pass 10 white resin. And you just take a look at them right here. And hey, they look good, right? Now these are stormtroopers. They're not the most detailed minis that you can find, but just looking at them, they came out really nice. And that's really what I care about when it comes to printing these models. And this was across the entire plate. So it really was no surprise to me that it worked out. When it comes to something that is bigger, okay, that takes a lot more resin, I want it to print this from one of my favorite movie franchises, The Terminator. This is from Wicked, and this is a bust of a T-800 Terminator. This was printed on the, uh, with their past 10 black resin. And this model, besides the head, is just completely solid. So we have these two um, for the, the chest, the frame, left and right pieces were printed individually on this printer. It was completely successful, no failures with it. And man, I mean, just kind of looking at how this model is designed, you see how it has like all these different wires that's kind of coming off of them and everything. And there's, it, it's kind of intricate, you know? And this using the auto supports in Blueprint Studio, I was able to print this off in just a few prints. And I think that this also came out looking pretty good. Now there's a tricky thing when you're dealing with the RS printers or really any Hay Gears printer and you're using auto supports. So the one thing that hasn't changed about the auto supports in Blueprint is that they are still quite aggressive in how many it puts on your models, especially in little tiny places, you know? So for this guy that has like all of these openings in his frame, I can look around there and if I have a flashlight and shot it in there, I'll still be able to see some support sticking in, you know, all different kinds of directions. But for the most part, as you're looking at him, I think I did a fairly decent job of kind of cleaning them up. But that's just one thing that you have to be aware of, even with this new model. You're still going to be using the Blueprint Studio Slicer, and it's still the same kind of slicer with all of its quirks. But they have improved the slicer for some, um, some quality of life features. For example, it now offers a multi-plate display. So if you're printing something like this that comes in multiple parts, you can continuously add new plates and you'll have a view of everything that you want to print. You can work on them individually and you can slice them all at the same time, or you can tell it to just slice an individual plate from that group, as opposed to having to make individual files for every plate that you want to work with. That is a really good quality of life feature. Another good thing that they added recently, but before the plates is the ability to remove auto or pre supports from files. Now, I personally have not had a problem with pre-supports with the RS printers, but I know people have. So what I tend to do is I take a model that's already been pre-supported like this one was, and I use the support in Blueprint to remove those pre-supports and it does a perfect job every time. And what I like about that is it maintains the orientation of the model. And I like to keep the orientation as the designer placed it so that maybe I can get an optimal result that way. So I just remove the pre-supports, then apply the Blueprint Studios auto supports and just let the pieces drop wherever they may. And it's still worked out and is pretty good. And I haven't done anything to this particular model. You know, he is black, so things are just going to show up a little bit more prominently on him, like little dust and specks and stuff that's fallen on him over time since I printed him. You've probably seen this in some other videos that I've done. He's just hanging out in the back waiting for this moment. But yeah, this would be a great model to just get some paint on, 
pretty easy, I think. Silver paint, red eyes, and he will look absolutely amazing. And what I got going on right here that I'm going to show you with some B-rolls, I'm printing a Kratos bust, something a little bit bigger for you to take a look at. And even before the whole thing is done, I still feel pretty confident that this model is going to be successful and is going to look pretty darn good. You know what else looks pretty darn good? Take a look at this model that I printed it from the classic blood sport movie chung lee this is an amazing model done in the past 10 resin and it just looks great and this model here is a testament to how the the benefits that you get from the post-release module it's expensive you know don't get me wrong it is an expensive accessory but i cannot deny how much easier it is to remove supports from a model when you use the post-release module and how much cleaner it can leave your models when you use it because the supports don't grab onto the model. It doesn't stick as deeply into the model as it would without the post-releasing module, the posting release module rather. And this guy here just proves it. I mean, look at him all the way around zero post-processing on him and he is just clean. It is absolutely beautiful. It's one of my favorite models that I have printed and he just looks great. And again, just comes all off of the RS, um, the RS and the RS Turbo. The base came from the uh, RS, but uh, we got our guy here coming off of the RS Turbo and he just looks just fantastic. I'm spending a lot of time talking about my experience with this printer because it's really the same thing as the RS. So if you really want to get to the nitty gritty of things and how the build plate is, it's exactly the same or how the spout on the vat is nice and wide. So it makes pouring the resin out easier. I mean, all that stuff still applies. So I encourage you to go check out my original Ultracraft Reflex review video, as well as an up date that I did like three or four months after I started using the RS so that you can kind of get an up-to-date sense of what I think about this entire system as a whole but you know this is really just for this incremental upgrade for the screen and what my experience has been with it. I'm still seeing some nicely detailed models whether they're miniatures or larger pieces except I'm getting faster print times this time around. But everything else is the same. It sounds the same. It moves the same because it is the same. And you can just upgrade that screen and you can have the latest and greatest. And this is just for the RS, but there's also for the original Ultracraft Reflex, there's a turbo version for that too. It has to be because I've seen it in Blueprint Studio. So um, yeah, that's a good upgrade path for anyone that just wants to expand the longevity of their printer. They get a little bit more performance simply by replacing something that you're going to have to replace anyway. So if you're going to have to upgrade something, this is definitely what to do and this is the way to do it. So that's gonna do it for this video. And remember, if you want to buy this printer or any of the accessories and you want to show some support or the channel, you can just check out that affiliate link in the description or the promo code. And when you buy it, I'll just get a kickback from it. And I have no regrets because this is a good product and I'm happy to stand behind it. So that's it for now. If you got any questions, uh, be sure to leave them down in the comments. I'll do my best to answer them. And if you want to see more videos like this, be sure to subscribe to the channel because I always have more coming. So until then, take care of yourselves and I'll speak to you soon.